Generally speaking, people hate coming to church to hear some goofy preacher talk about money. And generally speaking, preachers know that. And, and, and so they, therefore they kind of hate talking about money. We may be goofy, but we're not stupid. But honestly, this goofy preacher doesn't mind talking about money. I think that money, I think that money and giving are all a part of the discipline of being a Jesus follower. Always, I've always thought that. So I hope this sermon on grateful generosity is helpful to all of us today. It's been great for me to go over this this week. I know probably all of us would just love to be a millionaire. I, I, I believe with all my heart that given a little work, everybody in this room could in 20 or 30 years be a solid thousand air. <laughs> I really think you could. But honestly, me personally, I'm actually working on my second million. I haven't had success uh, making my first million. <laughs> so I'm working on my second million first. I'm sneaking up on it, if you will. I, I did hear a simple two-step way to become a millionaire recently, if you want to write this down. First, uh, be a billionaire first. <laughs> Secondly, buy the New York Knicks, okay? It's almost guaranteed that you'll be a millionaire in like nine months. Today my task is to talk about grateful generosity. There are four pillars of Hope Church, and here they are, community, worship, service, and generosity. Of course, we come to church uh, wanting to consider the book of Romans or the uh, teenage years of Jesus or find out what the Pentateuch is. But if we're honest, how many times a day do you wonder what the Pentateuch is? Honestly. Do, do, you, do you think about the book of Romans seven or eight times a day? How many times a day or in your life have you ever considered the teenage years of Jesus? Now, answer me this. How about money? How many times a day do you think about money? You see what I mean? In church, we talk all the time about what God has to say about our spiritual lives, and that's a super thing, and we will continue to do it. But what does God have to say about our generosity? What does he say about giving back to him? I've got a couple of hope friends who are going to help me with this sermon today. I want you to meet John and Donna Simpson. Listen to what they have to say about grateful generosity. Well, giving is important to us because we want to show that we're grateful for, for what God has done in our lives. It's one of the first things we do. It hadn't always been first, but it's the first thing that we do. And we make sure we take care of that. And I also think that it's a um, responsibility as a Christian. And we understand that through giving, the church has bills, heat, air. You know, the pastors have to get paid. And so, uh, you know, it's a responsibility. Uh, and we're tithers to also uh, tithe the 10% that I think is required of us. It became important to me because I uh, wasn't always given this, as I just said. And I started counting my blessings, the little thing, and it added up to be big. And I looked around and said, you know what? Other people need to be able to take advantage of this, and I want to be able to benefit others. So I started giving because I know the church was a place I could trust, and I just wanted to help the church get the word out that how good God is to us. And I've always given, I grew up in a family that um, my father was a deacon at our church, my mom was a deaconess, I sang in the choir all my life. So giving just kind of came naturally to me. And uh, I joke often and say, when I got my first job at McDonald's on Highland, uh, I started tithing then, you know, off of my McDonald's check and hadn't stopped since. Uh, for the record, uh, I contributed to Donna's tithe by eating at that very McDonald's on Highland <laughs> way too much. So what does the Bible say about giving? A lot, actually. But just a few thoughts for today, and here's the first, and it kind of drives the whole concept of giving for me. God's character is a character of giving. We see it in every aspect of our life. Our mere presence here today reflects his giving. He has given us the day. He has given us reasonable health 
to be able to gather today. He has given us the beauty of a spectacular world. He has given us people to love and people who love us. He has given us chicken wings and pizza. <laughs> I know that because it practically says just that in James 1. James 1, 17 says, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. That's wings and pizza if I ever heard it. <laughs> Coming down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. In Acts 17, 25, Luke writes, he himself gives to all people life and breath and all things. So we not only show our gratefulness and our giving like, like John said in the video, but we also actually imitate his character. We imitate the character of God when we give. Proverbs 3, 9 says, honor the Lord with your wealth and with the first fruits of all your produce. God's character is a character of giving. Now, you know I'm a Jesus guy, I talk about that all the time. I'm always curious about what Jesus might have to say about a subject. And I'm here to tell you today that Jesus has a take on this. And his take is pretty strong. Here's what he says to his disciples in Luke 12. He says, sell your possessions and give to the poor. Provide purses for yourselves that will not wear out, a treasure in heaven that will never fail, where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there also your heart will be also. I, I kind of imagine the disciples, you know, sitting at Jesus' feet and, and having their, their pencils and their notepads out, writing down all the important things he had to say about everything. And then Jesus says this. He says, okay, fellas, here's what you need to do. Sell your possessions and give to the poor. And they look up like, hold on, hang on. He was certainly got their attention in that moment. But what was, he, what was he telling them? Jesus was telling them, don't get all hung up on what you got. The treasure you have here is going to be gone someday. I guarantee you. Store up a treasure in heaven. That's where your heart needs to be. Not in your possessions. Not in your 403B. By the way, take it from me. Don't look at your 403B <laughs> right now. You'll thank me. I promise you. Then Jesus tells this compelling story a few chapters later in Luke 21. It's always been so beautiful to me. Jesus looked up and saw the rich putting their gifts into the offering box. And he saw a poor widow put two small copper coins in. And he said, truly I tell you, this poor widow has put in more than all of them. For they all contributed out of their abundance, but she out of her poverty put in all she had to live on. Wow. I mean, Jesus was, he was running percentages that afternoon, wasn't he? He knew full well that the rich folk were tipping God. They were tipping God. And he wanted his disciples to see this widow's grateful generosity. Her gift was a gift of faith. Her gift was a gift of trust. Honestly, I mean, as I reflect upon my own life, I find myself acting more like the rich than the widow. It's sad, but it's true. Because you see, giving can be a challenge. Giving can be a challenge. I get it. God gets it too. He knows that when it comes to my money, I am generally more motivated by greed and fear than I am by faith and trust. He knows our, our lives better than we know them. I want you to listen again to John and Donna. Well, the everyday challenges you know you're facing that can cause you to think, maybe I shouldn't give. The washer could break, a, a dryer, or a heating unit. As a matter of fact, that happened to us this past month all at the same time. Back then, those kind of things would, stop, would keep me from giving, but because of my poor management of money. And I was able to overcome that through uh, becoming very smart about financial conditions, financial situations, and through uh, training. And I guess challenges, um, 
And even for us being married, I'm the one who writes the checks. And so no matter what we're going through, we're very, very blessed to not have financial problems. And so uh, I just write the checks. It never has to be an issue to me because, like I said, I hadn't stopped tithing since McDonald's, you know, hamburger place. So uh, to me, it's just something that you, that you do. You know, I like the story of the guy who was so in love with his money that he put it all in a briefcase. And his wife says, what are you doing? He said, honey, I'm putting my money in a briefcase. I'm putting my briefcase up in the attic. And when I die and go to heaven, I'm gonna grab the briefcase <laughs> on the way up. Well, sure enough, he did, he did die. His wife went up to the attic. There was his money right where he left it. And she said, I told him he should have put it in the basement. <laughs> That's messed up, isn't it? That's a whole other sermon. <laughs> Our founding pastor, Craig Strickland, uh, told, me, uh, told me that joke a few years ago, and I, I use it every day if I can. <laughs> there are challenges. There are challenges, and we know it. But there's a huge upside to giving. And here's a piece of it. Giving both blesses our souls and can heal our world. It blesses our souls and it can heal our world. I love the way that, that Paul commends the, the, the Corinthian church in 2 Corinthians 9. And by the way, he, he busts their chops sometimes, but he commends them here. There is no need for me to write to you about this service to the Lord's people, for I know your eagerness to help, and I have been boasting about it to the Macedonians, telling them, that since last year, you and Achaia were ready to give, and your enthusiasm has stirred most of them to action. And then he goes on a few verses later to say this. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly, under any compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver, and God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. As it is written, they have freely scattered their gifts to the poor. Their righteousness endures forever. Paul says that this is a matter of the heart. You should give what you have decided in your heart to give. And then he says, not, not reluctantly or under compulsion. He says, because God wants you to give cheerfully. Here, here are the Simpsons again. Makes me feel good, <laughs> makes me happy. And of course, I want to be able to uh, provide funds for the church to be able to reach out to people. Mm -hmm. And uh, when we give, we get a chance to uh, mingle with people. So we, we get a chance to uh, mingle, we get a chance to serve others in church. So, so there's a lot of uh, things that we do and get involved in church and giving, not just giving money, but our time and our talent and everything that God gives us. Mm -hmm. We want to give a portion back to the church. Mm -hmm. But you do, it's a personal thing that you get. Um, that years ago, I decided, even with my giving, like for gifts and birthday gifts and stuff like that, I give without any expectations of anything in return. If you think of uh, Hope City Church, uh, mm -hmm. uh, if you think of uh, Oasis um, uh, Appliances, uh, mm -hmm. Team Reed or uh, Rise to Read. Uh, let's take a Rise to Read, for example. Working with kids who are in the second grade to teach them to read a third grade quality level, I should say, that's a 70% increased chance of them graduating from high school. Not only does that help that person, it helps our community. It's a good thing to do. You should, you should try to think of that you'll be benefiting others. And that the church cannot just op operate on fumes. I mean, it needs money to operate in order to spread the God, the gospel of Jesus Christ. It needs help. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would say, let's do it together. Jump in. You will see uh, how it's affecting our community in a very positive way. Love gives. I mean, what did God give? For God so loved the world that He gave. He loved the world so much that he gave. God gave his son. The very best that he could have ever given, he gave. Because love gives. When you love, you give. I mean, some of us in here have kids. You like to give to your kids. Or, or, or do you like to always withhold and never give them anything good? No. You like to give to them. 
Some of you have a, a spouse or, or a girlfriend or a boyfriend or a significant other of some sort. Do you like to give? Absolutely. Why? Because love gives. It, it's always baffling to me when people say, I, I don't go to church because all they talk about is giving. And maybe that's all some churches talk about. But love gives. I, I love giving. I, I, I love giving. Every, every single month, our largest bank draft, besides our mortgage, is for God's work here at Hope. You think I resent that? By the way, I, I, I love it. Are you kidding me? I, I don't resent it. I, mean, I might resent the MLG and W bank draft <laughs> or the cable bank draft or whatever those things might be, but I don't, I don't resent it. And if I resented it, I don't think I'd give it. Because, see, I'm grown. I'm grown, and I'm way past anybody guilting me into doing stuff. I give because I'm crazy in love with a God who is crazy in love with me. We give. It's the only reasonable response to what God has given us. Let me close with this thought. It is all God's. It's all God's anyway, isn't it? First Corinthians 29 says this, everything in heaven and earth is yours, O Lord. Wealth and honor come from you. You are the ruler of all things. In your hands are to exalt and give strength to all. God, we give you thanks and praise your glorious name, but who am I and who are my people that we should be able to give as generously as this? Everything comes from you. And we have given only what comes from your hand. Hear, hear one last word from the Simpsons. As stewards of our possessions that God has given us, we own nothing. Uh, it's all God's. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Lord provides to us. And, and we should uh, give to others, uh, to benefit others, in order to show them that God is real and He's working in our lives and their lives too. Just reaching out to people to let them know that it's just not about the materialistic part of it, I guess. I love Hope's pastors because I always say that I don't think they have a three-piece suit between the three of them. You know, maybe one has a jacket on, a vest, and a pants, you know, but <laughs> <laughs> it's, just, it's just, you know, they don't come with the fancy robes and the expensive shoes that we've heard pastors brag about their lizard shoes and have their wives stand up and turn around in her design a dress and stuff. And I like the fact that we dress so casual here. I tell my, I invite people to church all the time. I said, you don't even have to go and get a new dress and a new hat, just come on like you are right now, you know. <laughs> you know, I, I too often focus on things that don't matter. I, I let the little things that don't matter freak me out. A, a train blocks my path and slows me down for two minutes and it's like my world is coming to an end. The stock market drops. The dryer breaks. A plane ticket that I didn't buy yesterday at $292 is now $683. But here's something I've been trying to do recently. When I'm upset about something, I ask myself, will this matter 100 years from now? That's a pretty good filter to run things through. Will this focus of my attention and worry, will this thing, will this matter 100 years from now? If the answer is yes, this will matter 100 years from now, then what you're looking at matters. But if, if you're upset about or bothered by something that really won't matter 100 years from now, then that thing is not eternal. You know what matters? People matter. People are always gonna matter. Perhaps the ones you're sitting right next to right now, they matter. Your kids and your grandkids matter. Your parents matter. Your dad that you may not be getting along with right now, he matters. The people who live next door to you or that you work with or that you went to high school with or, that you, or who you work out with at the gym, they matter. People who are in need, they matter. People matter. Jesus matters. His truth matters. Generosity matters. Helping those who are without matters. Showing people the love of Jesus, that matters. Why is it, though, 
that so many of us focus on the things that don't matter and ignore the very things that do. The Apostle Paul, toward the end of his life, he was in prison, he was chained to a Praetorian guard, and he said these words in Philippians 3. Listen to this. He said, but whatever was to my profit, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss compared to the surpassing greatness of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them rubbish that I may gain Christ. I consider them rubbish. The Greek word translated for rubbish here in the NIV is a poor translation of the word. It's weak. The Greek word is skubalon, and it is translated rubbish in the NIV. But the more accurate translation is one that no Bible translator would put in print because it's too harsh, too graphic. The King James Version has the closest translation. King James translates skubalon as dung, which is still a little weak. You got me? You, you know what it means? I can't say it, but I promise you. That's what it means. I spoke about this years ago, and the next day, an artist friend of mine sent me a mock-up of a bumper sticker that my sermon inspired. It simply said, Scubalon happens. <laughs> Paul is saying, I consider all this, you know what? compared to the surpassing greatness of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. Everything I thought was important was not important. Knowing God, that was the most important. And see, that reality frees me to be generous. That reality launches grateful generosity. Let's pray together. Father God, um, as we reflect on this idea of giving, for some of us, uh, this just reinforces what we already know in our hearts and what we're practicing in our lives. For other, others of us, this is the first time we've even considered this. And, and obviously for others, this is something that makes us squirm because we don't, we're, we're, not, we're not there. Father, I pray that you might work with us wherever we are in this process and that we might understand the true power of knowing you and that everything else is rubbish. Father, we thank you that you love us with a perfect love and that you give and you give and you give and may we imitate you in that regard, we pray. In Christ's name, amen. Thanks for joining us today. We love to pray for you and celebrate alongside you. Please share anything going on in your life with us at hopechurchmemphis.com slash prayer and subscribe to the Hope Church Memphis YouTube channel to experience previous worship services and more. Have a great week.